Live. Brought to you from the Eternal Word Television Studios in Birmingham, Alabama. our church. This whole network is built on trust. The essence of evangelization is to tell everybody Jesus loves you. We are all called to be great saints. Don't miss the opportunity. Well, it's cold in Alabama. What is it, 29 tonight? I know that's not a lot for all of you up north, but to us it's freezing. <laughs> <laughs> and, but our, our little group tonight is uh, very uh, uh, full of energy, so it <laughs> won't matter. However, I think tomorrow night is my last show until next year. It seems far away when you say next year. But it's creeping up on us, and it's hard for me to think a half of December is over. Hey, have you noticed how fast, how fast the, the time is going? And, and you get up in the morning, first thing you know, you're, you're going to bed again. <laughs> a lot of people go to bed very early, don't they, huh? But anyway, it, it just seems to become... And so uh, tonight and tomorrow night is my last two nights before the new year. And so when I get back, you know, I'll say Happy New Year. It'll be 1999. You know, I was born in 1923. And uh, never did I think I would be here in 1999, let alone in a, in a television station. God does wonderful things that we don't even expect. And that's one of the awesome, many, many awesome things about God, that he does, he does awesome things with us. And I would like to talk a little bit tonight about Christmas. You know, you see more and more signs that says, Seasons Greetings. Seasons Greetings. Well, what does that mean? Are we celebrating winter? <laughs> I mean, that's the season. This is not, this is a winter season. Well, you say seasons drink. What do we say? Happy winter to you <laughs> and happy winter to you. It's freezing. Who wants to say happy winter? Winter is never happy. It's freezing. <laughs> it's, the, it's the world saying so much for you. Hey, <sighs> seasons great. Up north, they have snow, and they're sliding this way and that way. And you say, oh, that's fun. I never thought it was fun. I had blue. My legs were blue, and I'd walk to school three miles. And, and uh, I didn't think it was fun at all. So I would never say season's greetings. And now they have cards. It's cards, okay? You've got a big snowman. Are you celebrating snowman season? Because it says, season's greetings. Then they have sleighs. Maybe we're celebrating sleigh time. Oh, then they always have a winter scene, you know, where people are in a sleigh and they're going their way. And, and, but that says, season's greetings also. Now, I know the Eastern Rite, the word, the letter X, means Christ, which is fine. But now we don't want to even write it out. We'll put Xmas. Well, I know that says Christ Christmas. But there are very few, few 
people who say Merry Christmas, meaning have a happy Christmas. The incarnation is among us. See? And you see lights on streets, that's fine. But if, you, if a city puts a crib up, then they get sued, you see, because it's uh, something about church and state and all that monkey business. So we're not really allowed, almost, to, to put something up that says, I am celebrating the birthday of the Messiah. And yeah, I wonder, and I'm sure you wonder, why are we ashamed or afraid to say Christmas? Whose birthday is it? The winter? No. Santa Claus? No, that's St. Nicholas, and you're already gone. It's uh, December 6th. If you're in Italy, you celebrate the Magi, which is January 13th. That's when they give their gifts. Why? Because Christmas is the Father's gift to us. And we never give Jesus a gift. You give Jesus a gift for Christmas? Well, what are you going to buy him? A tie? No, you don't buy a tie. I think the season is a ties. I never saw so many ties in my life. Is when you go to an airport... They have three or four stores that have nothing but ties. How many ties do you men wear? I mean, they have thousands of ties. And whose gift, whose birthday is it? I don't know if we know anymore whose birthday it is. See, what we're supposed to celebrate is the birth of Jesus, Son of God. On, uh, on Christmas Eve, we always sing happy birthday to Jesus. And all during Advent, we try to do something for him. Make a gift of myself to Jesus. See? We've lost the whole reality of the birthday of Jesus. And, and you have everything except. See, why do you buy a gift for somebody at Christmas? Why don't you do it February 10th? This is as good a day as anything else. Why don't we do it another day? No, we pick the, the birthday of Jesus to give each other gifts. Well, I suppose it's a good thing. You're, you're imitating the Father, but are we? Are we imitating the Father or is it just a happy season? It's a season for giving gifts. Now, have you noticed they start around November, middle of November with Christmas trees? You could never put a Christmas tree when I was a young kid up until, oh, about a week before Christmas because we knew what we were celebrating. And then I want you to look on uh, December 26th. Walk downtown. You'll find all those Christmas trees out in the street. They're finished now. They're going to have a big white sail. White sail? What's a white sail? Sheets. Well, who many wants sheets? Sheets, pillowcases, towels. Ah, so we're all mixed up. The, the season is to put your tree up the night before Christmas, and you keep it up until the 13th of January. Because that's the season for his birth, for the Magi coming. See, we're not liturgical at all. We're commercial. I make a bet that beautiful tree that you put a week on and probably spend a couple hundred dollars with decorations will come down that 26th of December. Because your season's over. Oh, there is no such thing. We have to celebrate at least a couple of weeks. It took hundreds and hundreds of years for him to come. So I would like you to just 
examine yourself. You know, I bet the people that are alone on Christmas are the only ones celebrating Christmas. Think about it. Women in lonely apartments, and maybe you are lonely, and maybe you're crying because there's nobody around, and everybody's celebrating, but maybe you're the only one celebrating. Maybe you're the one that really knows whose birthday it is. When my mother was alone, when she, after I entered the monastery for Christmas, she was alone, but she had two plates on her table, one for her and one for Jesus. I say, oh, come on now, he wasn't there. Yeah, he was. In spirit, he appreciated that she knew it was his birthday. And she celebrated his birthday. And she'd go across the streets to St. Peter's and spend the entire afternoon in adoration. Well, on the, in the eyes of the world, she was a lonely woman all by herself on this great feast of Christmas. But I wonder if she wasn't one of the few that understood whose birthday it was and spent the afternoon with him. You see, we have lost the reality of why he came, and so we don't celebrate why he came. We don't. And so I would like to just go over a little bit of St. Luke's Gospel because... I would like to get into your hearts before the great day comes. Um, the beauty of Christmas. I, you and I were saved when he came. The salvation of the world, redemption of the world began when Mary said, be it done to me according to thy will. And there he was through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what you're celebrating. Oh, prophets wrote about it, Isaiah especially. And men and women for centuries thought about it, prayed about it, prayed it would come soon and soon and soon. And hundreds of years passed, and suddenly there he was. But where was he? In a stable. <laughs> you see, even then we didn't understand there was nobody there but a few shepherds. You know, shepherds in those days were not the cleanest people in the world. <laughs> uh, or, uh, uh, well, we wouldn't say they smelled bad, but I bet they did. <laughs> I bet if uh, you were out in the field night after night, day after day, you're in the mud, you're in the rain, you're... They didn't go on and take a little shower. I mean, they were dirty. And not only were they smelly, you hate to say these beautiful shepherds you got on your crib were smelly, but... What happens to you if you don't take a bath every day? I mean, it's pretty bad. They didn't have deodorant. But these men came as they were. They didn't say, well, I better dress up, you know. But the crib wasn't that hot either. You can't have 10, 5, 10 animals in a cave and have it smell good. See, we, we don't understand what Jesus did for us because he was not welcome to this world he came to save. He wasn't welcome. We have no room in the inn, and that's what we're saying today. Season's greetings. You don't have room in your inn for him. We don't have room. We're busy about many, many things. Well, I'm not against gifts. Dolores Hope sent me three boxes of Dates, about that big. I don't know where they got them. I mean, I never saw a date that big. If you ate one of those, you were ready to... I mean, you had a meal. <laughs> 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 
Well, I'm grateful for them. Get them every Christmas. But you see, it's not my birthday. It's his birthday. And I know everybody's sending me gifts, and we gobble them up. I got salami tonight. It's that big. <laughs> and it's Italian from this end to that end. And I was so excited, I didn't know what to do. And somebody sent his pastrami, you know? True. I said to sister, cut it thin, it lasts longer. <laughs> and I appreciate all these gifts, and I know it's given at the right intention. But a lot of people don't have the right intention. Well, let's just start here a little bit. We all know that the angel came upon her, came to her, and said that the power of the Most High will cover you with its shadow. And we can't even imagine what that meant. The Spirit of the Lord, the third person of the Blessed Trinity, came and overshadowed Mary. And there he was. The one awaited for centuries. And they all missed him. He was in their midst, and they knew it not. And I got to ask you, and I have to ask myself the same question. He is in our midst. Do we know it? Or do we know it not? You know, um, it would be a shame, and I'm sure when we read this, he came into his own, and his own received him not. Isn't it true today? When you admit, when you forget whose birthday it is, when you forget why he came. Today, you don't think you have any sin. There's no sin in the world today. Big sinners are excused. If I were a man, I'd be insulted today. If I, I'm a woman and I'm insulted today because women are not considered as women. They're considered vehicles of pleasure and trash. You cannot go, you cannot watch, a, you can't go through the channels even to get the news without seeing how women dress and how they're considered by the producers who produce their programs. Trash. <laughs> they're half-dressed. If they're half-dressed, they'd be happy. <laughs> they'd be well-dressed if they were half-dressed. And you consider that something wonderful? You don't even know when you're being insulted. That's what's so bad. So, and men, well, if someone can commit the most terrible sins and lust and be said he's only a man, that means the rest of you are in the same boat. That's not a compliment. It's not a compliment to be considered trash. See, but we treat Jesus the same way. You can't help treating each other the same way. No, because we don't know who came to us and why. If the Father felt so much pity for us, pity, that he sent his son to redeem us under such trying circumstances. Trying circumstances. In a cave, he's born. Wrapped with swaddling coat. Cold. Then having to run away from who? A king that was mental, insane. Filled with disease. You know how Herod died? Well, he decided he was God. <laughs> A lot of people decide they're God today. And he, he 
had made for him a gold, gold gown. When he went out and talked to the people, the gold shone in the sun so bright. And they said, ah, behold a God. And he sat down and suddenly that gown began to move on him. Yeah. You know what was moving under that gown? Maggots. The man was dying in front of their face, in front of their eyes. And before he died, the maggots were already eating him up. So much for that king. You see, he didn't know either that a child was born. A child was given to us to save us. There he died, a miserable wretch who never accepted his God, who was so jealous and ambitious. He had all the children slaughtered that were up to two years old. And then he decided, he made a law that the moment he died, all the sons of all the wealthy and all the kings would be killed. Why? So somebody would cry the day he died. Now you say, that is terrible. Oh, come on. <laughs> God, my, what are we doing today? On Christmas Day, there will be slaughtered some young babies in their mother's womb. I'll make a bet. And we don't care because we're celebrating a season. Are we any better than the ones over there, the first coming? And will we be any better when he comes the second time? You say, oh, you've got to bring that up. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to bring it up. You don't like it? Turn your dial. <laughs> you don't need to listen to me, but you're going to because you're curious. You want to know what I'm going to say next? And what I'm going to say is I don't think we're much better than we were the first time. Because we're too interested in the season. Well, let's see what he's interested in. We all know that my dear lady went to visit Elizabeth. And then... It says there was a time when Caesar Augustus issued a decree for a census. You know, when, when uh, David ordered a decree, he was punished by the Lord. And everyone went to his own town to be registered. And Joseph set out. You know, I like to see Joseph when he went up to the, the, the uh, captains or soldiers and the soldier would look up. He said, name, please. He says, Joseph. What tribe? David. Is that your wife? Yes. Go on. Do you know what he missed? Have you any idea what that soldier missed? He was talking to the foster father of the Son of God. He was saying, just like any other, is that your wife? Yes, go on. He talked to a lady. Who wouldn't give their arm and front teeth to talk to a lady? He missed the chance of a lifetime. And within her was Jesus, Son of God. But all he was interested is the census. And all we're interested is in the 
sees it. Is there any difference? <laughs> well, I'm sure Joseph thought he had enough relatives there. Somebody would take him in. But they're all too busy. Are we? Christmas creeping up on it. We're all so busy. Do we know what's going to happen? Are we like that soldier? Name, address, tribe. Go on. Are we like that? Well, it looks like it. Because it goes on. And it's how why they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to a son, her firstborn. And she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him where? In a nice, comfortable bed with a wool blanket in a warm house? No, in a drafty, windy cave with prickly straw. And the awesome thing about it is that she was content. And so was Joseph. Why? Because they had Jesus. They had Jesus. The birth of the Son of God had to be awesome. We don't always realize what happened? What happened? We believe since Our Lady remained a virgin before and after that the, the Son of God came through her little tummy like he did at the resurrection. He already was risen when the angels rolled that stone back, he came through the stone like he went through the door when the apostles were talking about him. And suddenly, with the door locked, he was standing there. And some of the great mystics have told us that the scene of the birth of Christ, that Michael and Gabriel were there to hand him to his mother. And there in her arms suddenly was the Son of God. Awesome. Awesome. The first birthday of the Lord Messiah. The first birthday. And it was cold and nobody was there but Joseph and Mary. And tonight, in most places in the world, it's cold and there's nobody there but Jesus and Mary. We haven't changed very much. We're too interested in the world, in the things of the world. And we don't know either that he has come among us. And then it says the shepherds were terrified and the angel said, don't be afraid. I bring you news of great joy. A joy to be shared by the whole people. You hear what it says? The angel appeared to a few shepherds. They're the only ones he could find. They weren't too busy. Just sitting around talking. Maybe they were talking about the Messiah. Maybe they were sitting there wondering in the middle of the night, would he ever come? Aren't things always going to be like this? And then suddenly there was a great light and they didn't know what was happening. And they were petrified. Wouldn't you be? I hope you'd be. I would be. If you looked up into the sky and the whole sky was lit up at midnight, 
And you saw angels up there and, and they were singing their hearts out. I bet there had to be one deaf shepherd. <laughs> and he'd say, what they're saying? They say, oh, shut up. We don't know ourselves. I write my own scripture. I made it. <laughs> <laughs> He says, it's going to be great joy. Over what? Well, listen, shut up, but I'll tell you what. He said, the Messiah's here. No. Yeah. Well, where is he? In some cave. A cave? The Messiah in a cave? Yeah. He's like us. Poor, unknown, unheralded, unaccepted by his own. But the angel said the whole people should know. Do you know? Do you know? You're part of the whole people. Do you know whose birthday it is? It says here. I bring news of great joy, a joy shared by all the people today. In the town of David, a Savior had been born to you. He's Christ the Lord. And here's a sign. You know, we're always asking for signs. A sign for this and a sign for that. In fact, you can't travel unless you have a sign. You would know whether it was east, west, north, or south. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddly clothes. So far, there's no different than any other baby. Lying, though, in a manger. That's different. No baby lies in a manger. Today, they have garbage cans. That's what you have for babies today, garbage cans. Or you sell them. You sell them for money. You get money for abortion, then you get money from another scientist because he wants to operate on their brain. He wants to take something out of their body. No, we have garbage cans today. We don't have cribs and mangers. <laughs> yeah, we know how to do it. We make Herod look good. Oh, no. And suddenly, there was a great throng of the heavenly host praising God. Glory to God in the highest heaven. And peace to men who enjoy his favor. Well, they found Jesus. So they hurried away and found him in the manger. Are you looking for Jesus? Are you looking for the anointed one? Are you looking for the one that prophets spoke about? Are you looking for the Savior, or don't you need one? <laughs> you don't need one, huh? I can tell you, buddy, you need one. Bad. But he's come. He's come in our midst. He's in the Eucharist. You can go to any Catholic church and he's there. I hope he's there. I hope and pray you will go to your church on Christmas Day and say happy birthday, Lord. I'm so glad you came. I'm glad you're here. I'm grateful that you saved me. You know, if you really know it's Christmas, his birthday, the best gift you can give Jesus for his birthday is to go to confession. That's what he wants. He wants to come back into your heart and soul. 
He, he wants to come back. He wants you to open the door of, of your heart and, and take him in and say, Welcome, Lord. I'm sorry you've been gone so long. I'm sorry I've been such a sinner. I'm sorry I've ignored you. I'm sorry I didn't know you were around. I'm sorry I didn't give you any attention. I'm sorry I didn't give you any love. I'm sorry I'm not grateful, Lord. I'm so sorry. And so I'm hoping this Christmas will be your best. I'm hoping that you make it his best. That you give him the gift he wants, not the gift you want. That between now and then you'll go to confession. And then won't it be a Christmas, huh? When Jesus will come into the little stable of your heart and lie in that manger and feel at home again. It would be a lot better than celebrating a season. We have a call. Hello? Hi, Mother Angelica. Hi. Where are you from? We're from Chicago. My name is Ella, and my ah. husband's name is Ray. Well, and Merry Christmas to both of you. Merry Christmas to you, Mother. <laughs> we wanted to call you and tell you that this year we decorated our whole we live in an apartment, and on the outside is our nativity scene. Great. And we have two posters up that are two feet by five feet. Awesome. And one says, Jesus is the reason for the season, and the Good. other one said, Jesus is the heart of Christmas. Thank you, Jesus. And our whole tree is done with angels and nativity. We wanted to tell people in Chicago, we live about three blocks away from Midway Airport mm. on the main thoroughfare, and it's all done with white lights. And we wanted to tell Chicago that Jesus is the reason, not them, nobody else. It's Jesus' birthday. Thank we are you. so happy, and God bless you, Mother Angelica. You. We love you. Thank you. I'm glad you did that because I think, I think that's what we should all do. And we shouldn't be afraid. You cannot be ashamed of Jesus' birth. You know, I know a lot of people have other religions or no religion, and they, they resent that, but that's okay. We're supposed to live in a free country. And I think we have the privilege of celebrating our religion, our God's birthday. And I'm very happy that you had the courage and the strength and to, to really manifest to everyone and the love, too, um, that you love Jesus. We have another call. Hello? Hello, Mother. Hey, where are you from? I'm from uh, Oak Lawn, Illinois. Oh, it's good. And what is your question? Well, I have been suffering through depression, and I haven't had much of any kind of happiness about the last... 16 and a half years that I've been in depression. It's my faith, though, that's been keeping me through. Thanks be to God for that, but it's rough. Mm -hmm. I can't really enjoy life. I don't feel emotions. Just like St. Teresa of the Little Flower had it. Yeah, okay. Well, that's okay, honey. Give your depression to Jesus, but just think of what's happened to this day. We, we, we celebrate Christmas, huh? Think about it. We all have depressions. Around Christmas time, I guess, you, you recall somebody who just died, and so they're not there to celebrate. There's all kinds of reasons why people feel sad at Christmas. But I think if we tried to just say, Jesus, I'm so happy you were born in our midst. What would I do without you? He would like to hear that. I know you have great depression, but just think of Jesus just for five minutes. Will you do that? And say, Jesus, I, I can't feel you, but you don't need to feel God. It's a matter of will. It's a matter of wanting to know Jesus and, and to be happy he came. 
And ask Our Lady to, to teach you that wonderful lesson that we must be joy-filled, not over ourselves, not over conditions. They change. They change. You feel good one day, the next day you feel terrible. The world is all wonderful today, and the next day it's terrible. We're, we're, we live in a changing world, but we must love the changeless one. You try it, huh? We have another call. Hello? Hello, Mother. Where are you from? I'm from Seminole, Florida. And what is your question? I don't have a question. I'd like to wish you a very Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thank you. And I'd like to share with you also that the main focal point in our home is the nativity. Great. We don't have a tree up. My husband's built a beautiful manger for our nativity set. We have a large lighted nativity in our front yard, and we do not exchange gifts, my husband and I, but he, along with my parents and my brother's family, have adopted another family this year for Christmas, and we are buying for them so that they will have um, a Merry Christmas that they otherwise would not have. Well, that's what Christmas is all about, see, to know whose birthday it is. And, and I, I want to congratulate all of you who have not forgotten whose birthday it is. And that, that's what Christmas is all about. And if all the Catholics and Christians in this country did the same, wouldn't it be a change? Huh? I don't think it's hard to convert a whole nation. If the people love Jesus, they'll convert. If we know, we know Jesus and we love Jesus, there's nothing too hard for us, nothing. And we can accept pain. One, one season, I was in the hospital for Christmas. And I, I gave it to the Lord. It was obviously what he wanted. And, and the sisters put the telephone in the chapel. It was off the hook, and they put it on the, in the chapel. I heard the whole midnight mass. And... Um, after uh, um, after Christmas, after Mass was over, they all said hi and Merry Christmas, and and we we sang for me, and and I I felt at home because all by myself in this room it was very quiet on the floor that night, and and I had a little crib, and and you know it was one of the best Christmases I had. Why? Well, you know, I heard Midnight Man. Um, I was there with the sisters. And most important, I was alone with the child Jesus, with God. It was his birthday. And we were together in a lonely place on his birthday. I had a realization of his birth greater than any other day of my life. And, and I think all of you that are alone and really suffer because of it, maybe you're not alone. Huh? I know, I'm sure you're not. You could have the best Christmas of your life like I did because you're celebrating the real reason. We have another call. Hello? Hello, Mother Angelica. Where are you from? I'm from Illinois. Good. Summit, Illinois. And what is your question? Well, Mother, I don't have a question. Okay. I just uh, was listening to you talking about Christmas, how people forget. Uh -huh. We started a tradition in my family when my boys were young. Uh -huh. We have a birthday cake. Good for we you. We light a candle and we <laughs> sing happy birthday. <laughs> That's my great. My sons are now 30, 28, and 26, and we have the same tradition. Wonderful. Because I didn't want them to forget that Christmas is Jesus' birthday. Ah, oh, that's wonderful. You see, that's, that's a, a wonderful. We do that every Christmas Eve. We have a table decorated. We have Jesus right there as a child, Jesus. And we sing happy birthday to you. Because that's what we're celebrating, you see? The Father's gift. And this is the year of the Father. I don't think in my lifetime we've never celebrated the year of the Father. You see, we 
thank him. He is Lord, creator, God of all. But at the same time, uh, we have very special reason now. We have another call. Hello? Hello? This is James Simon. Oh, well, how old are you, dear? I'm 12 years old. Wonderful. And what is your question? My question is, my aunt is very sick, my Aunt Susan, and she has a brain tumor, and they uh, operated on her. But I will ask for you to pray for her. You, you want us to pray for her healing, huh? Yes, please. Okay. Lord God, we pray that this young child's hand may be healed on your birthday, Lord. We, we know there are many sick in our audience. There are many people, Lord, who uh, just have forgotten because of pain and despair and depression, thy birth. I ask, Lord, that you look at this aunt of this child and look upon her as you always do, Lord, with great love and great compassion and give her that healing she needs, that she may continue in her life to know, to love, and to serve thee. Amen. You know, many people are calling for prayers for Christmas. And I want you all to know there are many people being laid off right after Christmas. Many people are alone for Christmas. Many sick this Christmas. But I want you to look at Jesus, Son of God, who came at Christmas. And, and unite your pain, your loneliness to his. You know, for centuries and centuries, people called and said, when are you coming? But when he came, there was no one there. That's loneliness, huh? When he came, nobody was interested. That's what you suffer, isn't it? Oh, he wasn't sick. But there is a kind of loneliness that's a pain, a deep pain in the heart. It isn't that sickness, a pain. Isn't that a part of loneliness? Well, there are many of you out there. All I'm asking is that you don't make a wrong choice. You say life is not worth living. Yes, it is, for his sake. That you don't separate yourself from him forever. That you say, Lord, you were alone in a, in a cave, and I'm alone, and I love you, and I wish you a happy birthday. You'll be surprised what it'll do for you. See, you and he have a lot in common. And maybe that's why he was born in a crib. Maybe that's why his, his birth was a, was a lonely one, a few shepherds. Not at all the great king coming or a parade or some great celebration. No, there's no one around. He came into his own and his own received him not. So all of you that are in that condition, please think of him. We have a call. Hello? Hello? Hi there. How are you? Where are you from? I'm from New Jersey. And what is your question? Oh, dear Mother Angelica, we want to tell you how much we love you. Thank you. And we have uh, uh, teenagers and some men in our family that need to be prompted for special prayers. Perhaps we can bow our heads together right now and pray for the coming of Jesus, the uh, season of Advent, for me and my family together with you. It would be an honor to put our heads together and pray with you. Lord God, we do praise you. We do thank you, Lord, for coming. We thank you for suffering from that kind of loneliness no one can describe just to be with us. Lord, you are with us often. We are not with you. 
We have forgotten your presence. We have forgotten your ways. And we have forgotten your great gift of salvation. So enlighten us tonight. Give us grace to see the real purpose of our life, the real purpose of our life, to know, to love, and to serve thee. Amen. You know, uh, if you wonder what you can give to Jesus for Christmas, he deserves the first gift. I would think confession would be a wonderful gift. Communion would be a wonderful gift. To get up Christmas morning, not running down to see what you got. But just say, Merry, Happy Birthday, Jesus. See? Let him be first in your mind Christmas morning. Wouldn't that be nice, huh? Go to Midnight Mass. And I don't understand people who go to Midnight Mass, then go to a party and get drunk. What's wrong with you? Did anybody understand that? I bet a bet I bet a nickel you went to confession, to communion, went home and got drunk. Now does that make any sense? After you're drunk, you don't know what day it is. What's the purpose? You don't know. You're out like a light. You could wake up New Year's Day and you wouldn't know what happened for two weeks. <laughs> you see, it, see we, we don't, we just do dumb things, that's all. You could say a rosary, I bet some of you haven't said a rosary since Vatican II. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you don't even have one. If you write to me, I must have uh, 1,520. I mean, I got cases of them that big, all blessed. So I can't sell them. <laughs> but see, that would be a nice thing for you to do. You might want to call an enemy. A person you haven't spoken to for a long time and say, hey, I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm very sorry. Please forgive me. Wouldn't that be a gift for Jesus, huh? Wouldn't that be a gift of gifts? You might want to call your mother-in-law. <laughs> Why not? Say, well, I'm here. I know you're not too happy about it, but <laughs> here I am. And I love you. You may be a battle act, but I love you. <laughs> I don't think she'd preach. You better skip that part of it. <laughs> but she may just be waiting for you to say, Hello. See. Why don't you call a friend or visit a friend who's in a nursing home? Or just call them up if you're too far away. Oh, there's a thousand things you can give Jesus for his birthday. And I would like to mention one more. Would you say hello to his mother? Would you say thank you, Mary? For saying, be it done to me according to thy word, and for bearing the Son of the Most High God. Thank you. You know, we, we do thank Jesus, and we should. But let's not forget to thank his mother on Christmas Day. And thank him for his love, his peace, joy, and forgiveness. Bye now.